Um, first of all, Prime Minister, we've talked an awful lot in the last couple of days about illegal migration. I want to talk to you about legal migration. Is it the government's target to get net migration down to tens of thousands? Well, I'm, I'm committed to getting migration down over time. Now, but I want to be honest with people about the challenges we face. And I know that the number one challenge that people are concerned about right now is illegal migration. And I made a commitment that I want to reduce the amount of illegal migration. It's the thing that I've spent most of my time on outside of helping the Chancellor prepare for the autumn statement. And people, I think, are starting to see the fruits of some of that work with our new deal with the yeah. French which is something that I prioritised in my early conversations with President Macron. I'm glad that that dialogue but, has led to a deal and that is going to help yeah. us, but it's not a silver bullet. No, 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 I know, but we want to talk about legal migration. The Home Secretary thinks it should be done to tens of thousands. Your Home Secretary thinks it should be done to tens of thousands. Do you think it should be done the, the legal, the, the, legal the, migration? The government's policy uh, and my policy is that we will want to reduce net migration over time. But I, I don't want to... a quarter of a million at the well, moment. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna gonna an, I'm not going to put an arbitrary number on it because I want to be honest with people and I think right now our number one challenge is getting a grip of the number of illegal migrants coming and that's the thing I want to focus on first. I think that's what, by the way, the British public rightly want us to focus on. Our deal with the French this week is the first in a series of things that we'll need to do mm. but people should rest assured that this is a huge priority for me. It's taking up uh, rightly a good chunk of my time because I want to grip it and I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix this problem. Now it's very warm here but it's getting increasingly cold finally back home. Uh, we're looking at minus zero in some parts of the country uh, this week. Uh, are you encouraging people to use less energy this winter? Well look, it, there's particularly elderly people who are vulnerable to cold and that's why we have uh, part of our system has something called a cold weather payment that provides extra financial support to vulnerable people at times of extremely cold weather. It's right that we do that. Uh, but what I would say is, you know, we, we prioritise getting extra support to particularly vulnerable people over the winter no, but, earlier this year I mean, as Chancellor but just on and, this, that, and I'm glad that we did that because it's the right thing to do. But just on this point where pretty much every European government is saying, you know what, guys, this winter, turn down the thermostat a bit. That's a conservative thing to do, to conserve energy when it's very high. Are, are you encouraging people back home to do that where possible this winter? Yeah, I think, look, people are going to make their own decisions, but I think... Are you not mean, encouraging well, them to Well, I think, look, ultimately, what's the thing that people are struggling with most at the moment? It's high bills, right? So if there are things that we can do, all of us, to improve the efficiency with which we use energy to be careful about it, that, that, that's a, I'm sure that's what people, I know that's what people are doing everywhere, because that's also helpful for reducing bills. It has the extra byproduct of increasing our energy security, but my priority is making sure that we support people who need our help with bills over the winter. That's what we're doing, that's what the government will continue to do, and then over the long term, we need to have greater energy security here at home, so we're never in this problem again. That means investing in things like nuclear and offshore wind to build up our resilience, that's what we'll deliver. Now, I know we've got the autumn statement on Thursday, but are you going to keep the triple lock on pensions? Uh, you wouldn't expect me to comment on specific See, measures I mean, just two days I, I don't before want to the autumn I knew you were going to say that, Prime Minister, because the point is that when you stood on the steps of Downing Street, you said essentially your mandate only came from the manifesto. Not elected by the public, not elected by members, not even elected by MPs. It comes from the manifesto of 2019. The manifesto is very clear. The triple lock pension is in place. It's very clear about no income tax rises or national insurance uh, rises. What, why is this even a discussion? Your mandate comes from the manifesto. You stood on that manifesto. It shouldn't be on the table. Well, I, since that manifesto, we also have had a once-in-a-century pandemic that blew an enormous hole in the public finances, and we've also had a war in Ukraine that has driven inflation globally, uh, globally up to very high levels, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. I think most people acknowledge that that's had an impact on us here in the UK. We're here talking to other leaders in, in Indonesia at the G20 summit. We're not alone in facing these challenges, but what I can reassure people is that on Thursday, people will be able to see that we will have put fairness and compassion at the heart of all the decisions that we're making as we resolve this challenge. I'm confident that they will see that we strive to do that when you look at everything that we're doing in the round. But, but you can understand that people looking ahead to the next election, if you were going to put a forward a manifesto and you don't keep these commitments, that people might question, well, what's the point of a okay, manifesto? You, uh, Particularly when you specifically said it was your mandate. I, I, you're you're speculat speculating about what may or may not happen in a future manifesto. What I can 
tell you is on Thursday, what we will do is make the decisions that are necessary to get a grip of inflation, to limit the increase in mortgage rates. And that means getting our borrowing and debt under control. We're being honest with people that that's not going to be easy. It would be wrong not to be upfront about that. But we will make those decisions with fairness and compassion at the heart of our approach. And I'm confident that people on Thursday will see that that's what we have strived to do. OK, two final questions. Uh, first of all, just on China, are you going soft on China? Because many of your Conservative MPs seem to think that you are. Now, China represents a systemic challenge to our values and interests. It also represents the biggest state-based threat to our economic security. That's why it's right that we take the steps that are necessary to protect ourselves against that. Our approach is aligned with our closest allies, like America, like Canada, like Australia. I'm here at this summit talking to those leaders about our approach to China, and I'm confident that the way we d- are dealing with it is very much in accordance so, so with how they clear, are So just be clear, because there seems to be some confusion about the le- language. It is both a challenge and a threat. That's what you're saying to finish Our language and approach to China, the approach and language that I've set out, is in complete alignment with our closest allies, with the United States, is with Australia, with, what you were seeing during the summer? with Canada. So I don't think it, anyone can look at that and say somehow we're out of sync or we're not taking this challenge seriously enough. Of course we are. And we're addressing it in exactly the same way as countries like America, Canada and Australia are. And that's the right thing for the UK to be doing. OK. And finally, uh, the quick fire round. I did this with everyone. Uh, hopefully it's a little bit of fun uh, as well. What's your favourite band? My favourite band? Yes. Uh, my favourite band, probably the Beatles. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you prefer? I'm a celebrity or Strictly Come Dancing? Uh, I, I wish I had time to actually watch some TV at the moment, but of the, which I don't, but of the two, Strictly. Okay. Which G20 leader do you most admire? Hmm. I, I, probably the safe thing is not to answer that question, given I'm about to go and have dinner with all of them, them tonight. You're to uh, I have dinner tonight. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm here getting to know most of them. Many of them I'm meeting for the first time. I think what's important is that we can have constructive dialogues with leaders that can make a difference for people at home. Right? The whole point, what I want people to take away, actually, is that there's a value in having these dialogues. And I think people saw that after I started talking to President Macron about our relationship, spoke to him about illegal migration, and actually, relatively quickly, we've got a new deal to tackle illegal migration. That's the value of these summits. That's the value of having good relationships, not just with one, but with many leaders. Uh, A few words. Uh, Coffee or Coca-Cola? Obviously, (laughs) Coca-Cola. Nando's or Pizza Express? Nando's. And just very finally, how do you relax, Prime Minister? Spending time with my two daughters. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.